Forum Talk Show. Our guest today is Arvind RP, Director of Marketing at McDonald's India, West and South. Welcome to the show, Arvind, and Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you too, uh, Kanchan. Uh, thank you for having me here. And I suppose you are speaking to us, uh, you know, from Middle East. So how is the weather there and which city you are in at present? I'm currently in Doha, uh, in Qatar. Uh, unfortunately, the World Cup is over, so this is post-World Cup. But uh, yeah, surprisingly cool. Uh, very, very pleasant weather. Uh, one has heard a lot about the city uh, and the development that has happened uh, for the World Cup. And one is like flabbergasted to see the infrastructure here. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 uh, it, it's, I'm loving it. You know, I think New Year is starting on a good note for you and also for McDonald's because you are launching the Big Mac for the very first time in India. So I would like to know what is the objective behind it and uh, which consumer segment you are targeting at. Sure, sure, Kanchan. Um, at Chicken Big Mac for us is uh, one of the biggest launches uh, uh, over the past few years. Uh, like you know, uh, there, are, there are a large number of fans for the brand uh, and especially for our Mac. Uh, more than a decade back, uh, we launched the Maharaja Mac in both veg and chicken uh, for the Indian market, conceptualized for the Indian market. And since then, uh, it has developed its own franchise and fan following. Uh, chicken Big Mac is conceptualized as a, a revitalization of the Mac platform to give the consumers uh, of Maharaja Mac Chicken some new news and something different, something new. Uh, as you know, Big Mac is a very uh, big icon globally. Um, and uh, it also kind of lands on our strategy so very well, right? Our strategy is all about growing burger leadership, chicken leadership, and of course, coffee leadership. Uh, so this initiative uh, is in line with that strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and yes, I mean, uh, we are thrilled to launch this new iconic burger, and I'm sure the fans of the brand would uh, love it. Mm -hmm. So you have got, I think, Virinder Sehwag as, as your brand ambassador. So how does Sehwag connect to McDonald's as a brand and right. also with the youth of India? Right. So when, um, sometime back when we were kind of, uh, you know, ideating on uh, the launch idea for Chicken Big Mac, uh, we kind of settled on a key theme, the theme being uh, Chicken Big Mac is so iconic uh, that uh, uske samne har bada icon bhool jaoge, right? Uh, so, so that was the whole theme behind the Chicken Big Mac. Uh, and, uh, and who better than Virinda Sehwag, right? An icon in his own right. Uh, but more importantly, a very witty, quirky character, very much in line with what the brand is. McDonald's is all about fun. Um, and uh, and and Virna Seva kind of brings it to alive in his own quirky way. Uh, so that that was the brand fit. Uh, and uh, since he's an icon, a uh, big icon in his own right, uh, we said, what who better than kind of to bring this idea to life? So this is of course a multimedia uh, across such point kind of a campaign. Uh, and uh, and as you can see from the commercials, uh, Seva really does well to bring this uh, idea to life. Mm -hmm. I think 2023 is very different, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, marketing because things have opened up, and, you know, uh, compared to last two years when, uh, or almost two and a half years when, you know, there were a lot of lockdowns and a uh, lot of constraints. So I would like to know what are your biggest marketing challenges and opportunities in 2023 and also how are you planning to realign your marketing strategy now, you know, in the current situation? Yes, absolutely, you're right. Uh, it's been a challenging environment for some time. Uh, so I think the number one challenging, uh, you know, challenge for marketeers and especially in the QSR uh, is the softening demand environment. And in this uh, softening the demand environment, uh, coupled with uh, high inflation, how can we keep growing uh, the business rapidly? Uh, and also, build the market share uh, leadership. So I think that's the number one challenge. Uh, and, uh, and we have, you know, uh, we have a very strong strategy to kind of uh, tackle the situation, which has paid us a lot of dividends in the last few quarters. So we are very confident going forward into 2023 that despite the challenging uh, demand environment and inflation, uh, we would be able to uh, deliver good growth rates as well as 
uh, grow our market share. From a brand perspective, uh, I would say uh, the uh, idea is to double down on brand building. Uh, and, and I think this is something that we have been doing for some time and we have seen a lot of dividends. Uh, and there are a lot of brand initiatives that we have been working on. Uh, so, so the whole theme is doubling down on feel good marketing, as we call it, uh, and do a lot of fun stuff, do a lot of stuff that that kind of brings and rebuild the happy memories in consumer minds about the brand McDonald's. Uh, and third is, uh, I would say, from a, a perspective of marketing effectiveness, uh, a lot of analytics that goes behind our decisions on uh, which media to invest right, uh, which campaign uh, to go behind uh, from, uh, let's say, a ROI of marketing perspective. Uh, I, I think we have put a lot of thought behind that uh, and we are uh, having a very strong playbook. Uh, and that's very important in this challenging environment when every marketing dollar spent needs to give adequate returns. Uh, that is uh, great from a business perspective. I think I would say one challenge and two big opportunities going forward. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, I think I think you are going to increase your advertising spend. I mean, what I gather from your your response. So, in terms of in terms of percentage, if you can guide us, uh, what could be your advertising is expand in in FY twenty four? Uh, Kanchan, being a, a listed company and uh, the results uh, quarterly results are due, I won't be able to share exact numbers. Uh, but it's very much in line with, I would say, the category benchmarks and global benchmarks for us. Uh, spending on brand is a global imperative and an India imperative uh, from a Westlife food world perspective. Uh, and, and we have seen it deliver outstanding results, which gives the business a lot of confidence to double down on marketing spend. While I'm not able to share exact numbers, uh, but it's as per the QSR category benchmarks. But in terms of percentage, you can, you know, a little bit, you know, give us a hint whether it is going to be up, you know, considering a lot of, lot of, you know, constraints and, and inflation, but markets are also open up, you know, and we have just seen the result, you know, yesterday it came like, uh, so it's, it's a good news for the market, right? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I, I think uh, once you have a winning formula and once you have a strong strategy, then it's all about, I would say, strong execution. Uh, I think that's the mantra for continued performance and Westlife Food World over the past few quarters has delivered uh, outstanding results. Uh, and we see, you know, that momentum going forward also. So can you share your current media mix and also which platform has been able to deliver you the highest ROI? Sure. Uh, so uh, I'll give you one context, uh, pre-pandemic and post-pandemic, uh, uh, Kanjan. Uh, pre-pandemic, I would say, uh, the delivery business uh, was about 20-25% of our business. Uh, fast forward now, uh, in the first few quarters, you would see delivery business uh, close to 40% of our business. So it is assumed, uh, you know, high levels of significance today. Uh, and that is on the back of our omni-channel strategy, uh, which we have put into place during the pandemic, recognizing the fact that uh, the consumers value convenience, consumers value safety, so we have to be uh, anytime, anywhere brand, right? Uh, not just a dine-in brand. Uh, so, so in light of that structural change uh, in our business, uh, digital obviously then assumes significant, uh, you know, uh, needs significant investment. Uh, so pre-COVID, I would say roughly 30-35% of my consumer-facing spends uh, were digital. And now it's close to 55-60% uh, of the consumer-facing spends being digital. Uh, and digital is being spent both for brand building and performance marketing. So it is through the funnel, uh, as we say. Uh, and of course, a lot also goes behind the CRM and analytics. And within digital, if I ask, because this is a lot of new things have come up over the past two, three years, right? From OTT to... to, to uh, yeah. Sure, sure, TV sure. Absolutely, absolutely. OTT was hardly there a few years back, and now it's a very significant part of our mix uh, in specific geographies, that's for sure. Programmatic uh, takes a lion's share of the spend, uh, and that's the best practice in the digital industry. Uh, and like I said, uh, a lot of personalization, CRM and analytics also goes behind uh, customer management, as we call it, growing frequency, growing retention uh, across all of our touch points. 
we have our own channel med delivery uh, we invest significantly behind med delivery uh, and uh, and we are soon launching a new app uh, also um, and and the whole idea is to take not only the store experience but the digital experience to the next level uh, recognizing the fact that uh, the importance of digital touch points uh, today mm -hmm. so what are your ob objectives behind launching the app so we we have an app for uh, more than 15 years uh, and like you know the app you just mentioned about yes yes delivery. we have this McDelivery delivery app for more than 15 years now it's a very important part of our delivery business of course every app needs uh, you know uh, uh, i would say uh, revamp of UI and UX from time to time. And that's what I was referring to. Uh, so you will see an introduction of a new app very soon uh, that will take the consumer experience uh, to the next level. So that the old, the previous app would be uh, deleted and- right? Yeah, yeah. so you will see the uh, McDelivery in a new avatar, McDelivery app in a new avatar very soon. Okay, that's really great. So how do you plan to expand your footprint in South and West? Uh, we have an aggressive plan Kanchan, to kind of uh, improve our footprint. We recently announced 250 to 300 stores over the next five years. Uh, and that's a very, very uh, aggressive plan that we have. Uh, and uh, there are two uh, or three dimensions to this plan. First is from a geography perspective. Uh, we are very strong in markets like Mumbai, Pune. Uh, and we want to ensure geographic uh, dispersion. And you will see us uh, working a lot uh, on South, for example, a lot of new stores coming up in South. The other dimension being smaller cities, uh, post pandemic, especially, uh, we have seen new, the smaller cities do very well, uh, like an indoor, uh, like a Coimbatore, and you see us in doubling down on the smaller city uh, agenda. And the third dimension is drive throughs McDonald's is known for its drive throughs globally. We have the largest number of drive throughs in India. Uh, and that's something that you will see more uh, from McDonald's in the next next few years. This is very interesting that that you said a lot of demands is coming from smaller cities. So can you please elaborate more on sure. the share of, of smaller cities in your entire portfolio? Sure, sure. Uh, uh, no one as the uh, unro unlock happened post pandemic. Uh, the, one of the first geographies where we saw uh, the bounce back of demand was our drive throughs in smaller cities. Um, and uh, and that remained consistent, uh, Kanchan, right? Uh, you know, uh, one would have thought that uh, it's it's a pent up demand and it might or may not last. But the fact is, uh, right from that time the unlock happened to right now, smaller cities have been growing faster than the bigger cities. Uh, and also, there's a huge market there, uh, be it uh, smaller markets like I said, Indore or a Kolhapur or a Coimbatore, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, and uh, while a significant amount of our business comes from smaller cities today, uh, that share will only go up over time as we add new stores uh, in those smaller cities. Uh, and what we realize is the brand is so strong uh, that uh, when we open a new store in a small city, uh, consumers know the brand, consumers flock to the brand, uh, and uh, and and the business really takes off. Uh, so, so that I think also reflects the strength of the brand that we have built over the past 25 years, that, uh, that even in smaller cities that we're talking about, uh, the brand really does well. And that gives us encouragement to add more stores in the smaller cities. Mm -hmm. uh, Arvind, last question. Uh, how are you dealing with inflationary pressures? I think uh, uh, tackling inflation needs uh, three or four uh, you know, dimensions. Um, of course, one of the realities of uh, food inflation is uh, uh, one needs to pass on uh, the uh, inflation to the consumers in a calibrated fashion, right? But then the whole thing comes, how do you do it, right? Uh, we invest, invest a lot of time and effort uh, in doing a lot of research uh, to understand you know, how to pass on this price increase to consumers. Uh, and we have gotten better over time uh, and a lot of uh, analytics goes behind deciding what products need to see what price increase in what geographies, in what channels. Uh, and we're happy to say that over the past few price increases, uh, uh, we have seen uh, the whole idea of passing on of, of doing a price increase is uh, not to impact growth. 
and we have been relatively successful in that. Uh, and that's something you'll see more from us going forward, calibrated price increase based on a lot of consumer research. The second is uh, a doubling down on what you call as what we call as value. Uh, while price increase is one thing, what uh, ultimately the consumer buys is value from us. Uh, and we provide outstanding value. And one of the dimensions of value is menu innovation function. Uh, we have seen over the past few quarters, uh, our menu innovations like gourmet burgers, uh, make spicy fried chicken in South, uh, and now chicken Big Mac. Uh, so these menu innovations really help in giving new news. Uh, and, and while the inflation is a reality, uh, consumers have something new. You're give, always giving something new to kind of make sure that the growth rate uh, is sustained. And the other dimension of value uh, is attractive pricing, making sure that uh, the key products are attractive. Uh, and from a tactical perspective, uh, we our app, McDonald's app, offers a lot. There are fantastic offers for consumers. Uh, and we kind of personalize offers at a consumer level. Uh, and that's a big driver of business today. So one has to work on multiple dimensions like this. Uh, and last but not the least is uh, our feel-good marketing. Uh, the last thing one should do in an inflationary environment when one is passing on prices is to cut back on brand building uh, because brand building over time reduces price sensitivity. Uh, we are a big believer in that. And while we do all of this, we can, can make sure that we reinvest on brand building uh, and uh, our feel-good marketing. Very interesting points, Sumit. Thank you so much, Erwin, for talking with us. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Kanchan.